WaveLab 7 also offers the possibility to record audio material from different sources. Here you see an open workspace. Now simply click the record button and the recording preferences are instantly available. For example, markers can be created automatically based on the freely configurable settings for break and silence. And the input signal is also already viewable. Click record. That's it. You'll find that WaveLab holds a wealth of editing tools, perfectly made to help you with your day-to-day -day productions. Functions such as trim, creation of fades, and even the time stretching and pitch shifting functions are really helpful features that make your workflow a lot easier. WaveLab's global analysis tool is indispensable when appraising audio material. Loudness displays the average loudness and additional parameters. Peaks give you the maximum values for the left and right channel of the audio material. Pitch shows the average pitch or frequency. With extra, you can detect DC offset and possible errors in the audio material. Now we've noticed that the left and the right channel have different levels, and it also appears to be an offset in the signal. By using the Pan Normalizer and the Process dialog, you can now easily compensate the difference in level differences and, at the same time, remove the DC offset. With its restoration suite, WaveLab 7 offers perfect capabilities to eliminate unwanted noises. And, as we all know, background noises such as humming or clicking can affect the signal dramatically. Here the included debuzzer eliminates humming noise effectively. Other noise components found in the audio material can quickly be removed with the denoiser plugin. By using the freeze function, the noisy part of the material can be used as the basis for a noise fingerprint in order to remove noise more precisely from the audio material. The clicker is another powerful tool included in the restoration suite, which removes click noises from old records or distorted audio material. The popper and the crackler are also included. With the Spectrum Editor, it's possible to remove errors in the frequency domain. Open the editor by clicking Spectrum Selection button. Let's choose an unwanted noise within the frequency spectrum, which we can edit on the deepest frequency level using different linear filters. In this case, we want to remove the bass signal. First, we listen in on the part in which the bass is to be removed. Then we mark the area and choose a bandpass filter. Now click the Apply button. When playing back the audio material, you can clearly recognize that the bass was effectively removed from the material, without influencing other frequency ranges. Unwanted noises can also be removed on the spectral level. Using filters may also leave audible holes. To avoid this, it is recommended to copy and paste comparable frequency areas from other parts of the audio material, in order to unmask the perceived hole. First, we pre-listen to the area in the audio material and select the part in which we want to remove the interfering signal. In this case, let's use Define Selection as Target. Then, using the Shift key and mouse, we go to a similar area that doesn't contain interfering signals. Let's define this as the source. By using the Copy Source to Target command, the clean part of the audio material is copied into the target area which maintains the room ambience. During the mastering process, it is sometimes necessary to apply effects on single sounds, even after the stereo mixdown has been completed. This is where the Spectrum Editor reveals its true power. 
So we want to add a stereo echo to a guitar solo and we've already added the plugin to the master section. Let's pre-listen to the song and mark the part where we hear the guitar solo. Now we make good use of the new routing options within the master section of WaveLab 7. First make sure that the plugin you want to use has been activated in the master section. Now render the effects of the master section, in this case it's the stereo echo, into the selected part. This time round we don't want the audio signal to feed through the effects of the master section. That's why we disable the function play through master section. Now we can hear the stereo echo within the guitar solo part. Mm -hmm. 